Hey guys, can you hear me all right? Is it okay? You upstairs, hear me? Good. Um, okay, so okay, everyone, one more time. I'm Casper. Uh, I'm the general manager for Uber in Poland, and what that means is that um, I had the operations here, and I was actually lucky enough to be the first guy uh, on the ground in Poland, and I was the second guy uh, hired by the company in, oh, thank you, um, in uh, Central Eastern Europe after the guy from Russia. So, yeah, the Russians. Um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and like how I started with Uber, how the business developed and sort of where we progressed from this, uh, this really tiny group of people. And in the beginning, it was just me sleeping on the couch with my laptop uh, to, to what we are today and the kind of partnerships that we are doing and this kind of value that we are b bringing to Poland, to Polish users and, um, and to really all the citizens that in the city that we are operating in. So... Um, one question, the, like, sorry, one quote at the very beginning um, is from this this article that uh, covered uh, Uber and, and Travis uh, Kalanick specifically in um, in the Fast Company magazine, and this sort of to tell you why I'm even here, right? Like Uber right now is a pretty big company. We employ over 8,000 people worldwide, um, but we are still not a corporation. And what we are is really just a combination of startups, because every every single city does its own thing. Every market is a new, uh, every city is a new market for us. It has its own team, has its own people. Very often ha they have their own processes, because um, they have to figure out like how to do business in in those cities. And um, I'll show you sort of how that works and how that progressed with me personally and with the company um, as a whole. So. Um, just a tiny bit of background. I started my uh, career, for lack of, better, of a better world, a word, in uh, advertising. So I started working for um, Ogilvy in uh, Warsaw in the strategy department, and I loved it. Advertising is great, great people, soul of the earth. Uh, like I, I've drank way too much with these guys and <laughs> have way too many stories to, set to tell, but maybe not with a microphone in my hand. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of time, a lot of fun. But I decided, hey, I, I want to do something different and learn more. And um, I went actually abroad to to do another masters, and uh, I ended up way over here. That's a very small village next to Paris. And while stu studying there, um, Uber reached out to me, and they were like, hey, guy, I'm, like you look kind of smart. Um, do you want to come and work for Uber? Um, well, they say that a bit later. At the beginning, they were like, eh, who are you? Um, <laughs> I was like, hey, I speak Polish. That makes me a, the, great, the greatest guy to, to launch the Polish market, right? And they were like, eh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that, that was the first step, sort of getting your foot in the door and, and later proving that you have the tenacity and the mindset for, for doing what we do, right? And, and that is... Um, you know, there's this old running joke that we have in the company is that we all have to have the mindset of a honey badger. And I don't know if you know what a honey badger is. It's this tiny, li vicious animal that you just cannot kill and that will kill everything that moves. And, sorry, Blige? Sorry, closer? Like that? Better? Fine. So it's this weird animal that um, is maybe a size of like a, uh, size of like a bigger cat and it eats snakes poisonous snakes and that's awesome uh, like I uh, like <laughs> I like really just go online just straight up after this this talk and just google honey badger they're amazing creatures so um, we essentially especially at the very beginning it's important to get people that are super tenacious they're not going to to um, break up under pressure they, they are just going to do what is necessary to do right so um, I finally uh, you know, lied enough to those guys to convince them to to hire me, and and they did. And um, I drove all the way back from uh, Paris to Warsaw, and um, I it was like a fir first day, and I was supposed to start, I think. And I call up my uh, my boss, who was the head of um, head of launch for for Europe, and like, hey, dude, like I'm Casper. They don't know if you remember me. I was supposed to start. Like, do you do you remember about my existence? He was like, oh yeah. Uh, we hired you. Um, okay, let's come to come to Brussels and uh, and pack for like at least a week, and we're going to figure it out. So I did. I I went there. And, uh, not speaking French was kind of fun because they wanted me to like watch the onboardings and what one onboarding session is when you bring in a prospective um, potential drivers and you train them and you tell them all about Uber, and th that was in French, which I didn't understand at that time. So yeah, that was fun. And after two weeks, they were like, okay, that's that's probably enough. You can go. 
you know, you seem kind of smart. This is when they actually said it. Uh, here's a credit card and go. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, here's a credit card, go. And I was uh, there are no like guidelines or like, what should I do? And they're like, eh, you're smart, you'll figure it out. Uh, okay, so I hop on a plane, I go back to Warsaw, uh, I land in Chopin Airport, I'm like, okay, now the fun part begins. Um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, that 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 was that was the current stage, and um, you know I started working from um, I started working from cafes and and bars in my own apartment uh, back then, and then uh, I I just cannot focus if there are too many people around, especially in cafes, um, too many pretty girls to look at. Um, so I okay, like let's find a let's find a, an, an office space, and I found a place that I liked. I hired like I rented that from um, 180 Heartbeats, the the advertising agency, great guys. And um, I remember walking into the space, and I was like, okay, I kind of like that. And they were like, um, okay, so do you want to sign a lease or something? And I was like, yeah, but like I'm starting today. What? Like, I yeah, like the legal, it's going to take time, and the wire of the money, you just have to trust me. I'm starting today. And uh, to her credit, the office manager, Alicia, they're great, 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 awesome woman. She said, say, okay, like we, we, we figured it out. So I started there, and uh, this is where, well, this is when the tough time is between, it begins, right? Okay, moving uh, one step back. The way that Uber generally starts in the new city is that there are three guys. There's a general manager um, who sort of deals with communications and legal stuff and it's kind of more overarching strategy. There's a uh, marketing guy who does everything on the rider side essentially. So that's from acquiring users, like telling them, hey, how awesome Uber is, um, later to support. And then there's a guy who takes care of the drivers and that's a guy who essentially brings drivers in, he trains them, and he puts them on the road. And the problem was that in Poland, it was just me uh, doing the work of, of, of these three people. So um, essentially, uh, at the very beginning, you need to get supply on the road, like you need to get drivers. So how do you do that? And like, I didn't know. So like, okay, wh what do you do? You start putting ads on like Facebook and uh, Google and Gumtree and OLX and whatever. And you get first people in, and then you're like, okay, what do, what do I tell these people? And then I don't know. You just figure it out, uh, you know, along the way. So after some time, you figure out, okay, they have the same questions, and you know what to tell them, and you you know show them how the app works, and and so on. And uh, these were crazy times, and y you know usually this kind of onboarding sessions to get all the details uh, right, it lasts for around an hour. And um, a, a city of the side of Warsaw right now, we are doing what, like six or nine onboarding sessions a week uh, with uh, uh, maybe 30 people coming to each or 20, or whatever, depends on the date. And uh, this was sort of the standard in Western Europe. So like the, the cities in Western Europe were already running nothing in our region. And they were doing this five onboarding sessions, six onboarding sessions with, with some extra people, of course. In my first, uh, I think, two and a half months, I was doing 35 one-hour onboarding sessions a week. Um, and then all of the support for both riders and drivers, and these are hundreds and thousands of emails from riders and from drivers that come to you and they have a problem. And they have a problem on how to use the app and sometimes you have to get a driver to the office and he's like 75 and he doesn't know how to use the phone and you spend an hour with him um, to teach him how to use the phone. And that's okay because this is this guy's money for you. He's he's actually generating you know money flows for you. So you do everything you can to train them. And um, you know, this, and on the rider side, there's the guy who's uh, um, who reaches out to you and like, hey, I have all my cards from this certain bank, and they like I cannot do anything for the system to accept this as a payment method. And then you're like, okay, what do uh, hmm, okay. And then you reach out to the bank and suddenly you're a 20 something year old talking to like the head of payments for, for <laughs> this one of top three Polish banks. And like, hey, your, your bank doesn't accept Uber. What the fuck? Can you, can you fix that for me? And uh, they're like, oh yeah, we've heard about Uber. You're probably going to be pretty big. So, okay, and, and they fix it for you. So, so you learn these things sort of along the way. Because the, what I quick, quickly learned is that um, wh what we really do here in the Warsaw team is that we have a, a pretty wealthy investor from the States who just gives us um, money um, if we spend it well and he doesn't ask too many questions and he doesn't want to know too many things because he also has India and China and all the big places on, on his head. So 
that was pretty awesome that they l really just allowed us to do what we want. And um, yeah, and then we come to uh, something super important and that is getting the right people. And if there's one thing that I ever did right in my life is that I always try to get people that are smarter than me, um, people that are better at doing various things than me, that have more empathy and that, um, that just do things better than I do. And that's a very humbling experience when you, you meet, I meet with my team all the time and we have you know like a, a weekly status meetings or things like that. And like I see all those wonderful people around me and I know they are infinitely better than I am. And that's amazing, that's great because it makes you strive to become a better person. And um, this guy that you see here, uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm not usually the most enthusiastic guy. I tend to look at the risks more than, um, than the rewards sometimes, and that's, that's a part of my job. This is Chris. Chris was the first marketing manager that we hired. Super smart dude. Uh, he started at the age of 25, and uh, now a year and a half later, he has uh, marketing for uh, Central Eastern Europe. Um, so, tremendously talented guy. Uh, I don't even. I think he doesn't even have a master's degree. And judging by the tattoos, he was in jail or something. Uh, yeah, but like a super smart guy, right? Like, in the, and and this is the this is the key. You have to have the best people around you, right? And um, what what again I learned sort of later is you never ever ever compromise about the people that you actually bring on board to your team. Because like if you're not excited about them, this is not going to work out. And it's the same with building your team as it is with, I don't know, finding a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Like if they sort of tick all the boxes, but they, you just don't feel it, it's just not going to work. And thankfully, it's sort of all the pe people that I managed to bring in, I just kind of felt like this, this feeling the day before they were going to join. I was like, ah, I don't know, Boris is going to join. It's going to be so awesome. And if you don't feel that, just yeah, just don't bother. Like it's not, it's not going to work out. Um, yeah, so so bring the best people in, and and if you have the right mindset, if you have the right energy, if you have if you believe what you do, the right people are going to follow. And if they don't want to join you, that's okay. Just don't take them. Yeah, so that allows us to do what you what 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 we did. And uh, I know there's no uh, vertical axis here. I cannot show it to you uh, or anywhere outside really. But like we experienced explosive growth here in Poland. And if anything, our experience showed that um, if you have a good product and you have and you treat people well and you treat the drivers that you work with in a in a in a humble and a human fashion, and you're the first, I don't know, the first hundred fifty drivers that came through the door, like I talked with all of them, I knew them by their car, their <laughs> their history, their their uh, driver's license, um, and uh, yeah, and and that's a, that's an awesome feeling because like I remember the times when I was getting into a car and every single driver was like, oh, hello, Mr. Casper, I'm so lucky, I'm driving the CEO of Uber and then you're like dude like no just it's 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 not that I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that we are in the car together what's up how's your kid how's your family doing and, and you get into this conversation you learn more about your product because again the super important thing is that you actually use the product that you created as much as you can and you talk with people that use it constantly right and like I talk with riders and drivers all the time all the time and every single time I get a piece of feedback I try to incorporate it back into what I do and uh, you do that at a, at a very sort of small and qualitative level, but you have to do it a, a, at a big sort of quantitative level at a certain point. Because if you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of users, like you just cannot just rely on doing things one on one. But it doesn't mean that these things become less valuable. Yeah. So. Uh, Fun fact, like every single driver that you see with this kind of red couch uh, behind him um, was onboarded at our first space at Spitalna Street at the at the office that we rented for from 180 heartbeats. And uh, if you take a closer look, the guy, so this is a, dr a driver, he's still with us, uh, great guy. He's, um, uh, he was, uh, uh, w when he joined, he was a guy who was making uh, websites for a living and then he lost his job and uh, actually Uber to help him survive the couple months between uh, between jobs. So this is uh, this is this is amazing. He still drives every once in a while, and uh, and this is my first intern here, uh, Marta, who who helped me a lot, and and Chris, uh, a, a guy that um, that they hired to help me, 
um, and and I think right now he's the general manager of Dubai or something like that. Okay, and then becomes then, then comes the fun stuff, right? Because like we do we do business, we do growth, we do things that are super technical, super analytical, and and you just look at the numbers and you think about how can you grow this this business, but you do things like like these thi three things. So like for those of you who do not do not uh, know our first uh, kind of big stand that that uh, actually allowed us to combine our technology and the product with celebrating the the great Polish nation as uber donuts so we're delivering donuts on demand and you can just push a button and four donuts come to your place and they are they're they're for free and they are or, or they're or, or they ha there's like a small charge and we send all of the all of the money that 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 we make to a charity that we work with so we did that we did uber trees uh, so Christmas trees uh, on demand. Um, also, also we did that in Warsaw and Krakow and Tri City, I think. And we did supercars. Uh, one of other st stunts that we did, we we got uh, like a Mustang, a Bentley, a Ferrari, and some other uh, some other supercars in Warsaw. And, like they were for free. The users can just request it, and they they get an amazing experience out of that. And we do these things for two reasons. And one is just that it's super fun to do because. Uh, <laughs> Like I don't know if you see that, but there's actually Chris, the marketing manager in the Bentley, because uh, we hired, uh, we 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 rented all these cars in his name. So of course, if we broke them, it would be on him. Uh, but he has again high tolerance for risk. Uh, <laughs> so that was uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun, and you and and you do these kind of things, and you get like a room full full of donuts. I think oh yeah, I have it on the picture. So that was that that is a photo for, for the from the first stunt that we did, and um, to kind of show you uh, the how we work and what's the way we think. This location that you see here, it's a um, it's a store with headphones that uh, belongs to a friend of ours, and he let us use it to repack the donuts. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we we kitted up the space with uh, like antiseptics and and shit, so it's safe and, and there's no no health health hazard. But we did it there because we had no other location. And you have um, like the the first moment I remember is that this huge truck coming and and the guy starts unloading boxes and boxes of donuts, and then you have them in that form, and then you have to repack them in the smaller packages and get them to the drivers, and you have to do that in like half an hour. Um, and then I was like, oh, like how are we ever going to do that? That so crazy and then the guy is like hey yeah I remember I'm going to be back like twice with more um, and like you're never going to be able to do that and then and then you just do it right because there's a team around you like oh, you all work hard and and you have this kind of energy that allows you to do things that um, you know normally you wouldn't and um, and it's and it's a great team building exercise it's a lot of fun and also it gives you great publicity right so one of the things that that we learned especially is that um, one of them, like if people, when people tell me, hey, you know, social media do not sell or PR doesn't sell, and we have to do like only 100% uh, trackable methods, well, you can do that. But the best campaigns that we ever did were set, had the component of sort of using our product um, and showing its advantages to people, and at the same time uh, giving fun and, and great publicity for us. Yeah, so that's almost the entire, well, it's not the entire team, it's like half of it, really. Because uh, um, people are, are, are driving around uh, Poland, going to Poznań and Wrocław and all the other wonderful places that we operate in. And um, yeah, and like actually some of these guys are, are, are there, they're sitting upstairs. So say hi to them uh, after w w when, we, when, when, t uh, when the drinks are up. And uh, yeah, and that's this kind of way that sh that we went through, and that's that's from uh, five minutes. Good, that's from me uh, sleeping on the couch to an entire team of people, and you bring in more and more and more people, and uh, suddenly we went from a place where Warsaw was just a little dot on the Uber's map, right? Um, no one really knew where this country was and where we were and what we were doing, and um, and that also means that the that the HQ or the regional headquarters, whatever, they just left us alone because they didn't know what we were doing, and then suddenly they did like a like a review or something, and they were like, "Holy shit! Like this is actually working." So uh, right now we are in the top three uh, markets in European Union uh, when it comes to trips. So it's a, we have a big business here, and we have thousands of drivers every day in Poland on the road making money, doing trips, and and we serve tens of thousands of users. 
uh, every week. Um, so that's that's a, that's a pretty awesome thing. And one thing that we man also managed to do is to convince our um, our top guys to bring in um, some investments, some additional investments into the market. So right now uh, we have uh, a nine million euro investment in Krakow. And we have a, what, what we call a center of excellence there. So these are guys that sort of look at scale at the processes that, that we are running and at the types of, of, of feedback the users are giving. And they're like, okay, how can we fix that? Because you know, back in the day when, when we were doing, I don't know, 1,000 trips a week, uh, this means you're getting I know, 50 complaints from riders or drivers or questions. Like, and this is something that you hustle and you you know you sit down and just do that uh, sort of before you go to sleep or before you eat or instead of eating, and and you can go through that, right? But at scale, this becomes 500 and then 5,000 tickets and then 50,000 tickets, and you just cannot do that anymore. So you have to think about how can you fix what you do so you don't create more problems. Because at the beginning, you assume that your time is free, essentially right because like what means extra five minutes like I don't have a life anyway uh, so so you just do that right uh, but at scale it becomes those 5,000 uh, tickets or 5,000 emails and then you have to have like people to do it for you and you have to pay them and they have to have a place to sit and they have to have a computer and so on and so on and you count that and you're like holy shit that's expensive um, so that's that's when you have people sort of think like take a step back and that's for me personally one of the most difficult things that I ever that I do at work is that I'm I'm sometimes so deep into something that I do is that I forget that sometimes instead of throwing just sheer manpower and, and hours and tenacity into a problem, every once in a while, take a step back, take a deep breath, look at what you're doing and how you can actually fix it in a way that's going to help you going forward. Yeah, and uh, and with the growth and with the fact that sort of more and more people start using your services, um, you know, start people start talking about what you do, and that's uh, that's another amazing thing is that at I remember going to the sort of the first meetings that, that I was going to uh, with like marketing partners, and uh, in the very beginning, like we didn't partner with like a bank or a telecom, you partner with a restaurant or like a club or something like that, and you go to these guys and they're like, and I'm and you're like, hey, I'm from Uber, I would like to talk about like a marketing partnership and they're like what is Uber? like we've never heard about that and you're like yeah so this is this app when uh where you just press a button and then the car comes and they're like okay and like why why do we want to do anything with us and then you have to you know okay you actually have to think about okay what can i give those guys so they're happy because this is this is another thing that when you do uh, any kinds of partnerships you have to think about okay what can i give these guys to actually um allow them to fulfill their purpose and we went from this uber what um to 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 hey like we want to work with you and you get more and more people coming in and you, you when you come to meetings they actually understand what you're doing or they have a friend who tried it or they have a neighbor that's a driver and that's and it, like it makes it way easier for you to do your job and then every once in a while you get this postcard from the past and I remember this this is a, a text message that I got from the girl who. Um, who manned the reception at, at our first office. And this girl hated me when I was there because I would get a, a meeting with a driver, with, with drivers at like I don't know, 8 a.m. And I'm not, I don't wake up very early to be perfectly honest. I would have a meeting with drivers at like 8 a.m. And this is like 30 guys coming into the office, like huge guys, the working people, soul of the earth. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, and they're and they're like, hey, we're waiting for this meeting, and she's like the only person in the office because I'm always late in the morning, and um, yeah, and, and she hated me. So what this text says is that I just read the article about you, and like I, I think like how many things changed when I I was constantly find, find, finding you on the couch in the office at 7:30 because you figured out it makes no sense to go home and sleep there, and I'm happy and I congratulate you, and you get these texts and you and you get that. You know, from people that you did business with, that the people that were around you, but you also get that from the people you work with. So from from for me, that's a lot of the partner drivers, who I saw, um, you know, people coming in, and I remember this one guy, and he's um, uh, just lost his job. Like he 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 came to this 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 session that I had, and almost crying, right? Like what what am I going to do? How am I going to live? And how am I going to support my family? And uh, 
and you know it's a it's a tough situation and like you cannot help him in any other way than than to give him job right so he starts working and i think right now he has uh 10 cars and employs 20 drivers and he has his own company sort of based on the uber platform and he's able to not only make a living for himself and 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 good living for his family but he's also allowing 20 other people to to make a living for themselves and and that's amazing and that's something that you know every time i i hear about the story of that and we have dozens of stories like that um i really feel that we are doing something that we are meant to do and something that is great that it's not only a fun business to run but it's a great service to the community that we are in and that brings me to a partnership that we announced uh, earlier today and we are actually working with the fine people of Migam. So I would like to get them uh, up on the stage for just a couple words, so don't worry, Boris. Um, so essentially what we are doing is that we're partnering with, uh, partnering with Migam Org, and they're this great company that provides translation services, uh, among other things, for, uh, for deaf people that have a tremendous problem with getting a job in, in the Polish market. And we're actually uh, helping them become Uber partner drivers that, so that they can sustain themselves, they can make a living, they don't have to rely on the government to give them money. And, um, and that's amazing for me because it's another way to serve our community. And that also gives me this kind of amazing feeling that from this one guy in the office sleeping on the couch, we went all the way to being this big company that can right now work with those small hustlers and, and uh, allow them to do their job well. So uh, Migam, if you want to talk about, uh, uh, about our partnership for a couple words, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Actually, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Aga, representing Migam. Uh, it, it's great. Today we released this information about our cooperation and it was actually the building this cooperation that was amazing experience for, for us as Migam uh, with a chance to learn some processes <laughs> from, from these people as they already reached the success and uh, they showed us how to do it properly. This is amazing and uh, except of, uh, of the fact that uh, we are we are focused on the mission of uh, of deaf community to make them more active uh, to to make them being more aware about that they don't have to be you know just living their lives like they are uh, excluded uh, so it's great to meet people that have open minds and understands our mission and that wants to in cooperation make make our mission happen actually so thank you <laughs> thanks for that okay guys that's that's it from my, uh, from my side so i'm happy to take uh, questions if you have any any questions to katsper Hello, I like Uber so much, however, I tried it only two times, but still, uh, I'm afraid of uh, this uh, poor but still cool but still poor drivers of Uber uh, who are hurted by uh, standard taxi drivers. Uh, do you have a solution for this problem in Poland, in Warsaw, I don't know? Yeah, sure. <coughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. So, um, as some of you may know, uh, we are facing some um, hostility from a small group of um, of guys that are opposing innovation, opposing who we are, and that's um, you know that's sad. And this is something that definitely should not happen in a uh, in a country of law and uh, that we are still living in. So, uh, so yeah, that's that that's one. Two, uh, what's extremely important is that that's a small group. And uh, what is clearly in the market that the, c the times are changing, right? And at a certain point, you have to realize that innovation is not competition or, or unhealthy competition. It's just an innovation, just something changing in the market that's ne not necessarily good or bad, it's just different. And sometimes it means there's a more efficiency, sometimes it means there are less waste in the market, and sometimes it means that uh, we have better opportunities for people that are working with us. 
and what we focus on is what we fo we focus on what you're doing the best and we are trying to get as much uh, safety for the partners drivers that are working with us because that's a priority and that's why we make sure that you know we also check the riders like you gave us your um, your uh, credit card number and your name and your surname and if you would ever think about hurting anyone like we know who you were um, and we can give that information to the authorities if needed. So, um, you know, there are things like that. We're also working on a lot of super awesome technical fixes to the security problem. And um, a very interesting experiment that I've heard about uh, recently is that we can use the uh, accelerometer or whatever is that in English in your phone, the thing that uh, senses sort of how, the, how your phone, phone moves um, to see if someone is not braking too fast, if a driver is not, is, or he's accelerating too fast, because it may mean that this is a bad uh, experience from the users, right? And we can even tell if this was a hard break of it or it was an accident. And we can call the 911 for the driver or ask the rider if he's okay through the app. And if everything is fine, then okay, maybe this technology didn't work as well or, or this was just uh, us being too careful. But if there's an actual accident, this is where, you know, even technology that doesn't, allow, that doesn't require for sort of anything else than the phones to be used uh, help to save, save a life or two. So, you know, we do what we do. Questions, questions, it's your time. Um, hi, any comments on the recent actions taken by some group of interest and the Polish government to uh, um, target the such initiatives as the Uber in more legislative way? And do you think that might affect uh, the amazing progress that you have in Poland? Thanks for that question. So um, this is something that comes up, uh, comes up every once in a while. And what I believe in and what Uber generally believes in is that there's a need for uh, sort of adjusting or, or thinking about the law that would allow for more competition uh, on the market. Because uh, uh, at the end of the day, if there's more competition or, or there's more innovation that everyone wins here, right? So, and I, I think this is something that especially in the startup community we all agree. So um, I am not particularly afraid because uh, we believe that the kind of values that we bring to the market um, are substantial and are not to be um, sort of ignored. And what we're bringing to the market is a uh, couple thousand small entrepreneurs. And uh, most of our partner drivers um, have their own commercial entity. Some of them are employed by someone. And this is hundreds of thousands and millions of zlotys of, um, of money in taxes coming here straight to the local economies. Also, what these guys are not paying in taxes, they're spending here. Because most of the guys that are drivers, they're not you know, stashing it somewhere abroad, or they're not buying yachts, or they're not going on foreign vacations. They're buying school uh, books for their children. They're making a better living. They're paying their rent, um, and, and so on. So that's, a, that's, that's something to be, to be considered here. And I think that um, we have all the re reasons to believe that um, if there's going to be sort of work on new regulations or rethinking of how the things work currently, then we're going to be invited. And if we will, we're going to show what we do. And I think the overall, uh, you know, our effects on the local markets and our effects on the local communities are so great that uh, it's really hard to say no to them. Questions, questions, here it is. Um, so you guys are growing super fast, right? And um, what about any other services? I mean, if you uh, consider uh, starting new services are, are the ones as the ones in, in other markets like Uber Cargo in, in Hong Kong or Uber Rush in, in the US and then um, many others. So how do you want to, um, what's, your, what's your take on this? And second question, how do you also want to compete or um, try to uh, find your advantage um, uh, comparing to your competitors? So, you know, iTaxi or, or other apps, how do you want to distinguish in, in this matter? Thanks. So uh, first the question about other services and the things that we're working on. And for the guys, uh, for those of you who don't know, we have this awesome service uh, running in a uh, couple cities around the world called Uber Rush. And Uber Rush is, 
um, essentially our take on city logistics. And if you think about logistics in general, um, most of the the transfer of goods uh, comes through ships and through rail and sometimes through road transportation, um, and it's and it's uh, long distance. Uh, but then a great many um, products are actually transported within the city and within a certain agglomeration. And there's a lot of ways there and super inefficient. And we find that it's a very interesting uh, way to put ourselves with, right? Because we already have thousands or tens of thousands of people working with us um, around the city. And like, you know, they deliver people. But like if we put the package sort of in between when they have a low time or they just pop the package in their trunk and then they drive a passenger to a certain location and then they li deliver the package, that's also great, right? Because you save a lot of time, you spend a lot of money, you save a lot of money, and uh, and every, the whole system is more efficient. So you can get more cars off the road. Um, so currently in Poland, we are focusing on our core product, and the reason for that is very simple. It's growing like crazy, and l doing literally anything else, it's a it's a it's a lose of focus, and that's something that a lot of companies uh, struggle with. And I've seen a great many companies sort of fail when they lose focus. They lose focus at what they do well and what is their main source of growth and what's their main source of, source of income. This doesn't mean you should not pivot uh, every once in a while because we did that as well. Uh, but, um, but yeah, when you know, when you hit the gold, don't think about other stuff that might disturb you. Like this is this is the thing, right? So we are growing uh, our main product at a, at a staggering place. And like I, I saw you the the graph, I think it lasted till I think November or something like that. We have not really slowed down since. And um, to be perfectly honest, I cannot keep up with hiring people. Uh, so we have a lot of positions open. Go to our website, like they're all there. Um, and yeah, so we're focusing on that. And the second question was about competition, if I believe correct correctly. So when it comes to competition, you know, we, I think the best answer here is actually going to be coming back to the values that we believe in. And we have this, um, this, uh, this company mission as stated by Travis is that we want to make transportation as reliable and as cheap as running water. And what that means is that we have to bring maximum efficiency to the market. And that means pushing cost for the for of the trip as low as we can and pushing the driver earnings as high as we can right and these are things that we do um, by two different means and one of that is our technology so by super intelligent dispatching systems uh, that are also learning the patterns of the city all the time we can make um, great choices, sort of where to send each car to make the, the, the distance to the guy that you want to pick up um, super short and then the trip as efficient as you can. And a big part of that is pool. So we have this awesome product that's called Uber Pool and what it essentially means that, let's say, um, I'm coming, I'm, I'm going to go to the city center straight from here and Boris for some reason is going to go for the, to the city center from Platz Wilsona. And the system is like, hey, there are two guys going the same direction, so why don't we put them in the same car, and then I pay 60%, you pay 60%, the driver er earns more, awesome, right? Like, everybody wins. So that's what we are trying to do. We try to get more people in less cars at a cheaper price point. And you do that through technology, and you do that through um, effects of, of huge network, because you have to have amazing liquidity to allow that to happen. So, um, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question perfectly well, but what we are trying to do, very low p price points for the customers to, to get as many as we can uh, of them in, and at the same time, satisfying enough earnings for the drivers, because as every platform, you have to take a, to think about the stakeholders at the both sides of the, of the table. Uh, so that's what we do, and that's, uh, I think, we are ver we're very good at. Uh, thanks, Kasper. I think that's, that has to be all, because we have to keep running, but thanks for your presentation, and... Uh, <laughs>